Hello, everybody. It's great to be here with you today. I know that it's a bit late and you may be all tired, but I hope that our experience in monetization and its optimiz optimization based on data analysis could make could help you in the future to make own decision decisions a bit better because we really make many steps in that way and I will introduce it to you. Uh, as we are speaking here in Casual Connect for the very first time, uh, I just want to tell you that it's uh, great to have this opportunity and uh, as a first step I would like to introduce us a bit. My name is Ivan and I am the co-founder and CEO of the company Powerplay Manager. We are an indie gaming studio and this is my colleague Andy who is a lead game designer in our company. Uh, so uh, what will be we talking today about? I will introduce the company a little bit so you will know more about us. Then I will tell you about the, our beginnings with the monetization and how we measured the data. Then about the changes, changes we have made with the time and new projects we had to show uh, some of our best examples. And uh, then Andy will introduce you a new monetization model which we currently have in the newest games. And uh, at the very end there will be a short introduction of our upcoming game with the new monetization strategies there. So, a few facts about our company. We are an indie gaming studio, founded in 2007 in Bratislava, Slovakia. First of the games uh, was released in the year 2009. Actually, that was an ice hockey manager game. And currently, we have 23 staff members and more than 300 external team members. And you can see a small photo of part of the team. And, uh, well, till today we released nine games and two of them are on Facebook. The rest is uh, browser-based. Most popular games is Skijamania, Tennis Duel and Powerplay Manager Football and Hockey. These are the two manager games where we started with them. And till today we have more than three million registered users, approximately 46,000 daily active users and uh, more than 100,000 monthly active users. And we were awarded Deloitte Fast 50 technology as uh, number one in Slovakia in 2014. So now to the facts, how we monetize in the beginning. Well, <clears throat> when I started to work in the gaming industry, it was around the year 2002, that was a different world than today, completely. First thing I was told is that the people will never pay in internet for online gaming, that it's impossible and it is like it is and we have to adapt. And the truth is that most of the gaming companies on that time had their business models based on uh, advertising income. That was the that, that was the main main income and uh, of course not everybody but the classical uh, models as we know today like freemium they were just beginning and you know the situation when everything is free everywhere then you start with model when they have to pay something here and there there was a big critic against that how is that possible I don't want to pay and so on some companies even tried fully paid models like you couldn't even try without paying but it all showed as not not successful on that time and uh, as i said we started in 2007 and exactly on that time years 2007 2008 all the business models started to change as you probably all know what's the reason the reason was the global financial crisis because the income from the classical ads which you had in the game started to be lower and lower and all the companies started to think what can we do about that because the money was missing and 
and everybody had to adapt. So the only real chance was to get money from the players and so started the well-known freemium model, which we actually used in the first of our games. And it was very special for us because we started with a manager game and that's a bit different than other games because, you know, the people think like managing a team, how is that if, for example, you pay and you have a lot of advantages and I cannot pay if it's like FC Barcelona would play against a third division team in Slovakia and that's uh, not good and I don't want to play like that. So we decided to go to the payments for comfort. So we didn't really offer them um, the, the advantages for money and uh, we g gave them advanced statistics, then special customization and comfort features. Uh, we established in-game currency, it was called credits and for that credits they were able to buy so-called pro packs which included all those good things in the game like as you can see here the customized jerseys or surfaces or or gloves and so on and uh, of course uh, these games are still running so the model we have s there is still the same and uh, the income from the model is not optimal, as you could probably know, because the voice of the community says that we want to pay, but we want to have uh, advantages in the game. And the counter voice said, says that it's impossible. If you do that, we stop playing immediately, and then all the players will stay alone on the sinking ship and goodbye. So it's very hard to change it now even if we try to put in some small, small advantages, it's always a big, big scream about that. So uh, we had to think different in following games, but I will come to that point. What we measured and analyzed in the whole system, uh, number of, of users, then number of users who bought the pro pack actually, and for how long and we compared the individual credit features because there were some special functions which you could pay without the, having the pack. So, and the motivating, how we motivated to buy the credits, we made special sales approximately three times a year for two weeks. They knew that they will be able to get bonuses on that time and uh, we also made ProPex discounts if they have multiple sports, for example, they had ice hockey team and then and they bought the pro pack and if they wanted to buy it in the other sports, so it was cheaper and so on. And we also enabled to, dis <laughs> enabled to disable the ads for paying users. Uh, that was not that tough decision because, as I said before, the income from the advertising is not the same as it was before, so we did it this way. But, uh, as I said, this model was not optimal at all. So with the new games, which we call dual games, we have to change the model. We came to classical freemium pay-to-win model. Uh, so those games are a bit different. It's not uh, managing anymore. They are RPG games, sport-based, with dual systems. That means that the players compete against one against the other for in-game money and uh, the energy is the is the most needed substance for gaming because for example if you play for a ski jumper and you s jump a couple of times then you are tired and of course you need either to rest that means time and they are usually impatient so that way they buy energy drink in the game and there was also a factor of production on time, that means you bought new ski, and till they are delivered you had to wait, and they again disliked <laughs> the fact, so they could, uh, for the credits, they could buy the product immediately. There was a big space for team cooperation, and of course that was a classical pay-to-win model with a big room for in-game events. And uh, 
Concerning monetization, uh, first of all, as I said, uh, we were playing with waiting factor, so they bought the drinks to play immediately. Then we made a special offers. As you see that on the right, that there is with the red, there is a timer, so everybody knew that till in 12 hours it's gone, and so they must decide, so they were a little bit under pressure. And a lot of events, uh, events are really great. Uh, you have to know how to work with them. They have to be uh, really interesting in the game uh, and uh, also nicely graphically done. We are using special uh, periods of year like Christmas and so on, but sometimes we even uh, find new new motivation to make an event without uh, any special reason. So uh, that was the monetization model, but uh, it, it's also re really important how you work with the credits they can buy. First of all, since the beginning of playing, we are giving them free credits. Uh, of course, we don't want to push hard on them in the first session or even first days to buy something. So they get free credits. They learn how to refill the energy and the duels, so they know how to do that in the future. They also get credits for inviting people into the game, friends and so on. And then we offer them a very special starting pack. That's a unique thing because they are not able to buy that later on. They must or can buy that just in the beginning. And that's very cheap one. And it's clearly seen how, how good it is to buy. And uh, of course, they can unlock new elements and so on with the credits they get. And uh, later on, we add new packages. They are more expensive, but the players on that time already know the product, the game, that much that they can appreciate it, that the packages are more complex. And uh, at the end, what's very special, that's, that's our offers based on a type of the user. And Andy will tell you more about that kind of uh, special monetization which data we collect. So the classical ARPU, ARPEPU, lifetime value, then new payers per day, how many online payers are there every day, and stats of all the credit features which are used, how, how often, and so on. Then there are advanced data, like average days in the game before the first payment is done. Most frequent first payment, that means how much money they usually spend as a first payment. And of course, we use A-B testing. And then the user data about the persons, that means how much they paid all in, in all of the games together and also in each game and where they are coming from. And we have a special handling with payers. We are dividing them into four groups as a classic normal payer, then bronze, silver, and golden. And uh, every category has a special bonus. For example, the bronze payers get automatically 10% more credits for every payment, and that's, that's uh, for uh, uh, unlimited time. Then silver payers, they get 20%, and VIP contact, that means there is a window with our customer care service manager, and they know that they can write directly to him if they need something. That's very good, by the way. And to golden, Payers, we are trying to even to send them a special gifts and presents. And uh, now, uh, uh, yeah, that's already set. Okay, now Andy, your turn about next information. Okay, thank you, Evan. So, uh, our new monetization uh, models uh, has been applied uh, to only one of our uh, games. Uh, we have chosen uh, Skijamania 2, which is uh, on Facebook. In uh, Skijamania uh, 2 uh, is an online sport game with RPG features. Uh, the player uh, plays uh, a, car a career of a ski jumper and uh, trains him and equips him. The competition uh, between uh, players 
uh, has made uh, in a short animated minigame uh, ski jump. Okay, so our our uh, uh, first model for pairs uh, uh, works like this. Uh, we find out the highest payment uh, that the player has has been uh, uh, made. Uh, in this example, the player may uh, pays maximum 10 euros uh, in one payment. Uh, in this model, uh, we prepared six offer levels uh, with uh, various packages. Uh, the levers are uh, divided uh, according uh, to price uh, uh, offers. And okay, back to uh, our example. Uh, when the uh, when the, when we find uh, the maximum uh, payment uh, of uh, our user, uh, we we offer we will offer him uh, in next uh, few days uh, offer with uh, uh, with a higher uh, price uh, in a higher level. For example, here uh, we will offer him a premium package uh, for 15 euros, and when he don't accept this uh, offer, uh, we will go one uh, level below and offer him a cheap, cheaper uh, package. For example, here uh, for eight euros. And uh, next, uh, when this uh, player accept this uh, offer, we will offer him uh, again a uh, higher uh, package for 15. Uh, Euros, but uh, with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, different items and uh, elements in, the, in uh, that uh, like uh, uh, that uh, in uh, package A. And next, uh, when the player uh, accept this uh, offer, uh, we, we will go higher and uh, higher. So uh, the aim uh, of uh, is uh, to offer the biggest possible package. Uh, of advantages uh, to the player and not uh, let him drift away fr uh, from the game. And here is uh, one example, uh, the smallest uh, package, and this is an uh, example uh, of package uh, for uh, 35 euros. Results. Uh, we made an A-B test. Uh, we divided uh, about uh, 1,000 uh, 200 uh, pairs into uh, equal uh, groups and uh, we gave uh, the offers from uh, the program uh, to only one of the group. Uh, there were uh, 555 uh, unique pairs who uh, bought something in the game uh, and without the use the program uh, and 519 unique pairs who bought uh, something in the game. So, also, uh, the payers from outside uh, the program paid uh, uh, 27,000 uh, euros, and uh, with program uh, pay only 25,000 uh, euros. Uh, the results of this program was more negative <laughs> than positive. We believe uh, the problem uh, was uh, that uh, we gave the pay pay uh, we gave to players uh, too many items uh, or elements. Uh, for a lower price. And therefore, in the next phase, uh, we plan to change the prices and, uh, and the content of these packages and display the offers only to uh, player, uh, payers uh, who stopping pay. We made also the second uh, program, but now for non-payers. Uh, the average uh, time before the first payment uh, in uh, our game is uh, approximately 20 days. And uh, if, the if the player don't play uh, after these uh, 20 days, we will give him a special offer with 50% uh, uh, discount. When uh, don't accept this offer, uh, we will uh, offer him um, a higher uh, discount, uh, in this example 67% uh, discount, and uh, when uh, he don't accept this, this offer, uh, we will uh, offer him in a few next days, uh, approximately 10 to 15 days, uh, the special package for 75% uh, uh, discount. We try 
to keep the prices of the packages as low as possible. Here is an example uh, package for one euro, and here is a package for two euros. The result of this program uh, was uh, more successful. Uh, we get a unique first time uh, pairs without program uh, uh, in two months, uh, um, 374 and unique uh, first uh, time pairs with program 749. Uh, and uh, uh, the unique uh, first time uh, pairs paid more money in this A-B test. So uh, one more, one more uh, statistic. Uh, our global action uh, when we offer the, the users 100% uh, bonus for credits, uh, we have conversion rate 1.3%. And uh, in this uh, program uh, has uh, first package uh, with a 50% discount, uh, has a conversion rate uh, 0 0.91. And the second package with uh, discount 67% has a uh, conversion rate, uh, co conversion rate uh, from player to player, 1.47%. Uh, uh, and the last package has conversion rate, uh, conversion rate 1.95%. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, we are uh, always testing various program. The program, uh, was, uh, the program for non-payer was uh, for us uh, very successful and we plan uh, this program in implement it uh, to other our games. But the program for, for payers uh, need more uh, tune-up. We need more tune-up and next we will see. But we can only recommend you uh, to try on your programs in your games because the Players in different types of games uh, behave differently and uh, therefore successful programs for them can look quite different. Okay, uh, and now uh, Ivan tell you uh, a few more sentences about uh, what we plan for the future. Thanks a lot Andy. Yeah, just a few sentences because we don't want to sleep here all. And uh, new game which we prepare and will be launched in a few days. It's called Battle Mania. Um, what we plan to change there a bit, first of all, indirectly, more eye-catching design. We invested a lot of uh, money into the graphics improvements. There will be a complete unique, uh, for, for I mean, for our, pur our pur purposes, uh, U UI. And um, also what people like, uh, to have real sportsmen in the game, so we have contracted over 35 real biathletes which will be in the game and the people will have the chance to compete against them. So we expect them to really like that. There will be also a collector part in that. And uh, the special offers concerning monetization will be more immersed into the story. Just for example, you can see a map over there on the right and uh, there will be the people will use to it soon but after a while there will be change for example a car will park there and there will be a standing person next to it with a question mark and you will click on it what's that and there will be a tourist who is lost and is looking for a pieces of the map for example and you will have to help him to find the pieces of the map and you will get a very good in-game reward to do that. It's, and it's, it needs, of course, to do some actions and uh, optimally it is set like uh, if you want to fulfill that fast then you have to pay a bit. So that's what we plan to do and we will see how it works. And there is a mini game which you can see below. And we, for the very first time, we will use a payment ma payment uh, option there in the mini game. They will be able to spend credits to to, for example, if they are shooting on the shooting range, and if you miss a target, you will be able to reload one more time if you use a card. So we are really looking forward to analyze that if that will work. All the time, it could be counterproductive. We we don't know. We will see. 
and we plan to advertise that game also in the other channels. Uh, we will focus on the TV. We, we have bought a big campaign on Eurosport during the Biathlon World Championships. So we are really hoping to, to succeed here. Gladly report you back on next casual connect about the results. And uh, you can follow us on Facebook if you want. And thank you for your attention. Are there any questions in the audience? I have one question. Uh, when I was looking at your slides and the numbers uh, based on some A-B testing, so you, you've uh, made your A-B testing o overall on like a thousand players at every experiment. How long do you uh, do this experience last usually to see results? Yeah, it depends on, of course, of what we test, but that test lasts over two months, I think. That one, exactly, which we were presenting about. But it depends. Some A-B tests can be done really quick. For example, first session with the students or randomly found persons, they can last one day, and you know a lot about that. But these data-based uh, tests, they really last longer. Okay. So in two months, you were able to know if the impact of the test really comes from the experiment or it can come also for any other reason? Yeah, in, in two months, in that case, we knew that one of the, one of the tests was a total success with 100% more new payers, but the, the second one actually failed because it was the same situation as before. Great. Cool. Hi. Were you able to uh, see any data on maybe demographics, geolocation, age, interests, uh, and in correlation to being able to pay or wanting to pay more? Well, sure. Um, it's different country to country. As we are sport-based and sports are different popular in different countries, it's usually that where they like the sports more, they also tend to pay more for that and of course the the there is a limiting factor uh, in some countries and that's uh, how much money they can earn of course if you earn 7th euro per month you are not able to buy credits for 2000 uh, you are actually but it's a really complicated issue then so we have uh, countries which are well known that it's western card countries and the USA and Canada where they usually pay more they don't care too much but uh, actually, our games are focused on European audience, and that is rather good in, in fact. More questions? No. Thank you again. Thank you very much.